all British troops assigned to NATO's mission in Afghanistan are now returning home. And for obvious reasons, I will not disclose the timetable of our departure, but I can tell the House that most of our personnel have already left. I hope that no one will leap to the false conclusion that the withdrawal of our forces somehow means the end of Britain's commitment to Afghanistan. We are not about to turn away, nor are we under any illusions about the perils of today's situation and what may lie ahead. We always knew that supporting Afghanistan would be a generational undertaking, and we were equally clear that the instruments in our hands would change over time. Now, we shall use every diplomatic and humanitarian lever to support Afghanistan's development and stability. We will back the Afghan state with over £100 million of development assistance this year and £58 million for the Afghan National Security and Defence Forces. We do think the threat from al-Qaeda is very substantially uh, lower than it was in 2001. Uh, there remain uh, threats, of course, uh, from uh, the Islamic State de Khorasan in the, uh, from the, uh, uh, the, the Haqqani network. Uh, of course, there remain terrorist threats uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, but the answer uh, is to have a, a peaceful and a negotiated solution, and that is what our diplomats will continue uh, to work for. We will uh, continue uh, to work for a, a negotiated settlement, uh, particularly uh, with regional actors uh, such as, uh, as Pakistan. And I do believe uh, that is the best way forward uh, for Afghanistan. There must be a settlement, uh, and it will have to, I think we must be realistic about this, uh, Mr. Speaker, it will have to include the Taliban.